Royal history has been made as Queen Elizabeth becomes the first monarch in British history to rule for 70 years. Marking her 70th year on the throne, thousands congregated at Buckingham Palace to celebrate her life and legacy. Crowned in 1953, her reign has stood the test of time, outlasting various tragedies and scandals, including the heartbreaking death of her late husband, Prince Philip, just over one year ago. Her Majesty the Queen has maintained a reputation of elegance and grace, steering as far away from politics as possible. But as her reign nears its end, what does the future hold for the British monarchy? And can we criticize the legitimacy of the monarchy itself? Have recent scandals stained the cleanliness of the crown? Do historic hereditary principles undermine modern notions of democracy? Is the monarchy too idle and symbolic, evading accountability? Is the British monarchy obsolete? So let's get to it. Is the monarchy obsolete? Uh, Jake, Marianne, and uh, Leo, you all know the rules. You each get 30 seconds to lay out your initial stance and we'll pick up, pick up uh, rather, the debate uh, right after. So, uh, Jake, uh, please uh, take the lead. Please uh, take the lead. I think there's a very clear answer to the question of whether the, the, uh, the monarchy is obsolete, and that is no. Uh, over you know, more than a thousand years, Britain has had a monarchy, and that has taken various different forms through the ages as culture and history has unfolded. But what we have right now is a very modern monarchy. Uh, the Queen does not rule. That's the job of the Prime Minister and the government uh, and the House of Lords. But she reigns. So her, uh, her role is as a head of state. She, she uh, performs various different yeah. symbolic yeah. functions within the mechanism of government. Right. But also she's the head of the nation, providing right. a, a focal point. Yes, Jacob, we'll put idea. a stop right here and uh, we will talk about the differences between constitutional monarchy and absolute monarchy in a tiny bit. But Marianne, uh, your 30 seconds are on. Okay, well, when I think of the possibility of abolishing the monarchy, uh, I say to myself, President Boris Johnson, uh, President Trump, President <laughs> Putin, and I think, oh, we're better off with, okay, she's not the leader uh, who, who uh, Jake quite rightly says, rules, but still head of state, somebody with that. Uh, continuation that she's had, the stability that she's had. But of course, the hereditary principle, um, with so much luxury, so much wealth, uh, in today's inclusive and diverse society, is a bit of an anachronism. And at the very least, uh, there are a whole lot of issues that need addressing to modernize it. Absolutely. And last but definitely not least, uh, Leo, the floor is yours. I don't think the monarchy is obsolete, not at all. I think the monarchy is a symbol of continuity. Plus, it's part of England's soft power. They, as my previous speaker said, they don't, um, they're not very much into politics, but right. they are a symbol and they're much loved. And this, they do very well. But uh, you know what, let's uh, start the d debate uh, from this point uh, exactly, dear panelists, and uh, from this point onwards, uh, please uh, feel free uh, to uh, interact. The Queen is so well respected because she refrains from dealing with politics, but maybe uh, it's, uh, you know, the chicken and the egg here. Maybe she is so well respected because she's, uh, so to speak, a Teflon. She's not really hands-on. She's not getting uh, uh, herself dirty, quote-unquote, uh, in politics, and to an extent, maybe this is why why, as a consequence, we're seeing such a tumultuous political landscape in Britain. Jake? No, I don't think that's right. The Queen, uh, I think that the, the political landscape would only be more tumultuous were the Queen to have got involved with politics mm. during her 70 years. Uh, you're right to say that, that part of the reason she's respected is that she is non-political. But not only that, she's managed to adhere to this very difficult task of being non-political, not getting involved with all of the different politics from the Second World War up to Brexit and beyond. And she's constantly maintained this very dignified, uh, stable stance. Uh, and that has caused her to become a great sub uh, object of, of British affection across the board. I mean, almost nobody in Britain wishes to see the Queen lose her position. It's almost unthinkable for us. And that uh, a big part of that is because she's been so wonderful and maintain this political neutrality. But you know what, I will pick up on this uh, point, Jake. Uh, you've mentioned the, the public 
loves the queen, wants to see the queen staying out of politics, maybe the monarchy is a bit too reliant on Queen Elizabeth. Marianne? Yeah, you could arguably say that it could, her longevity uh, has been the stabilizing factor, as Jake just said, but possibly now could be the cause of problems in the mm. future. Because she's been there so long, it's almost unthinkable to have anybody else, and that's why the questions are starting to be asked about, uh, certainly about Charles, perhaps less about William and Catherine, and the suggestion being put forward that do they move straight on to William and Catherine. Right, and, and, and Leo, uh, we, we've touched it uh, briefly. Jake mentioned that the difference between a constitutional monarchy versus uh, an absolute uh, um, monarchy. Talk to us about this delicate uh, 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 balance and the current state of affairs when we're talking about um, the royal family in the UK. Oh, good Lord. Looking at absolute monarchies in other countries of the world makes you appreciate democracy so much. I don't think the person whom his great, great ancestors were the most fierce warlords of their time is necessarily qualified to deal with gentle politics these days. It's a good thing the monarchy is more, more of a symbol than an actual ruler. <laughs> But, but uh, as our uh, senior producer, Georgia Bonnet, uh, phrased it, uh, is the monarchy to an extent undermining democracy, even though it maintains a symbolic uh, posture, Jake? No. No. Uh, it, it isn't a democracy. There's, there's no sense in which British democracy is damaged by having a monarchy, I don't think. The democratic process runs uh, on a first-past-the-post system. Uh, MPs are sent to the Houses of Parliament, the House of Lords, sit above that, and the Queen uh, and the royal family don't get involved with politics, therefore they can't be said to undermine it. The only uh, way in which you could mount that argument is by saying that by having a hereditary monarchy, they're not elected, they're born into a family of great privilege and status. That is undermining somehow the principle of equality that underpins democracy, but that's a largely theoretical argument. You don't see any undermining of democracy in a practical way, uh, on a practical, in a practical way, uh, taking place in Britain as a result of the royal family existing. Marianne, what do you think? Uh, yeah, if you take um, the Queen away from the monarchy, hmm. that's when you you possibly get a problem. Uh, the freeloaders, the the vast, hmm. the vaster family, uh, the people whose roles are questionable, uh, it will have to be very slimmed down. They'll really have to look at the future and, and how many family members are working royals and how many work outside of the royal family. Perhaps more of a Scandinavian model um, uh, rather than this, this very much extended family. Um, somebody put it to me very nicely today that uh, the Queen is like a maypole. Uh, she's always there. She's been there. Mm. People dance happily around her. But take that away and, and, and that's why this is, uh, could be quite a it is a real watershed moment actually for Britain I think and we really can talk about the royal uh, family without uh, talking about the so many scandals uh, surrounding it from the criminal ones most notably of course uh, Prince Andrew to the generally speaking media frenzy surrounding it so two questions here uh, for you dear uh, panelist a do you think the royal family uh, is handling those uh, scandals well and B do you think it maybe benefits to an extent by uh, the uh, media's obsession about every single step it makes or does not make, Jake? Well, the royal family has a very uh, carefully calibrated and, and a very mature relationship with, with the press and with royal correspondents on Fleet Street and, and, in, and in the uh, broadcast media. Um, uh, and the royal family, on the whole, has dealt rather well, I think, with scandals. I mean, but specifically, I mean, the Queen, as head of the royal family, has dealt with mm. scandals that have uh, come upon her by members of her family, not least Prince Andrew recently. Uh, she's shown the reserve and the determination necessary to send out very strong messages when she needs to, but then to step back and not engage when necessary as well. Um, and I think she has really been able to navigate the, this great ship of the royal family through very choppy waters over the last 70 years. Um, and, uh, and you're right to say that you know, there's a question mark over what comes next. Is Prince Charles going to be able to hold the helm as, uh, as, as securely as, as the Queen, uh, given his own history? A personal scandal himself. Yes, definitely. And Lior, do you think that the uh, royal family benefits uh, to an extent by the scale and scope of the um, media's coverage of uh, of its affairs? 
in a sense it might the the unofficial policy is never complain never explain <laughs> the more the media care the more the media is well leeches on them the more modern new young members kind of seem to lose it in front of the cameras right. and they complain more and they definitely explain more part of what made the queen so well regal is never complaining and never explaining and i think the younger generation fails to do so mm. including prince charles we know what he stands for and i think it doesn't do him well and before we end this part of the discussion and look ahead uh marianne what is the queen's legacy i know it is a difficult question because we're talking about 70 years and counting uh but if you had to pinpoint uh, um, the essence of her legacy what would it be it's being able to retain her dignity hmm. all through the scandals that we've all mentioned and just be there be that figure that the whole country looked up to and held the country together through war peace scandal she's just always been there um, always looking dignified always smiling and uh, just there I guess because you've got to be a lot older than me to uh, remember the king before her. Right, uh, Jake, uh, your uh, take on uh, the Queen's legacy? Well, I think that what she has transmitted is um, is the essence of the, the best of British culture, as it were, that kind of stalwart, continual adherence to duty um, and to common sense and to quiet dignity uh, that year in, year out has been unchanging and unswerving, um, regardless of the challenges that has faced that have faced her personally and the country. There are very few people in public life. In fact, there's nobody really in public life who can compare to that level of, of exemplary conduct uh, throughout her 70 years on the throne. And I think that there are a few people who, who who even see that as an ideal these days, sadly. And so. I think she really represents a beacon of what Britishness can mean that will be a guiding light to future generations. And uh, the exceeding uh, the uh, borders of uh, the UK, if I may, Lior, uh, your take briefly before we end this part of the discussion? On the on her legacy? Yes, please. I think her legacy is, I think her legacy is service and commitment. Hmm. Her super long reign, I think only two monarchs in the world's history have outreigned her. The first one being Rama of Tha the ninth of Thailand, who in next week, God willing, she will pass him. And the second being Louis the Fourteenth of France. Yeah. Being for so long on the throne definitely gives you a sense of deep-rooted commitment yes. to the job and to the people. Well, and service.